Namaste, everybody. I hope you are doing well today. Lessons learned from last week. A lot of it is expectations. Expectations of maybe who we are, who we were, who we might want to be, or maybe the people in our life, the relationships that we have personally or professionally. I always tell people that we're on different levels mentally, physically, and spiritually with our significant other and those other people in our lives. So a lot of people may be physically stronger than me or mentally or maybe even spiritually. But I'm going to encourage you to release the urge for social comparisons of yourself and others. Now it's okay for dreams, visions, and goals and to envision your life in the future. But release those attachments to success and those attachments to failures. Allow yourself to be just in this moment, in this breath, not comparing who you were, who you are, who you might be, but finding acceptance and unconditional love for who you are and begin to build your awareness. When you have those attachments to success and those attachments to failures, it's really challenging to allow yourself to be in this moment, to be present. The ego begins to get in the way and you begin to think of maybe the accomplish accomplishments that you achieved in the past or maybe the failures, and you begin to focus on the negative aspects of your life and not loving yourself for who you are today. So releasing the attachments to success and releasing the attachments to failures allows you to be okay with who you are right here, right now. Part of the expectations is really understanding human nature and understanding who we are and how we behave. We're all statistics at some level at some point. A lot of people are addicted to sugar. All right, sugar is one of the top 10 addictions, or maybe an addiction to alcohol. Or maybe, you know, we're a little overweight or obese. Or maybe we're part of the statistics of marriage or divorce, or the people that have had an affair. And there's a variety of different types of affairs that have occurred, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially. A lot of people cheat on their spouse financially. But I want you to really start analyzing of who you are and what happens. Last week at Warriors Ascent we had a special guest and I know nothing about politicians so those of you that really know me know that I really don't dive deep into politicians and their behavior. You know, um, most of it really doesn't affect me personally on my journey, my path. Um, of course certain rules and regulations do. and. And I had no idea who this guy was. I know he's a Navy SEAL. I really enjoyed his message about a warrior and how it really goes into love. And so to me, the definition of a warrior is an individual that forges their own path. They choose their own destiny. You know, if you're any type of corporate or military organization, you know, there's somebody that has made rules at the very top and everybody below has to abide and follow by those rules. FedEx and UPS, you know who they are by the trucks they drive and the uniforms they wear. You know, you see those people in their uniform because somebody along the path said, this is the color, this is our logo, this is our theme, this is who we are, this is our identity. And so we're going to have our trucks, you know, with our logo and our colors, our uniforms are going to display that. Nothing is wrong with any of that is what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is a warrior really begins to enrich their life personally and enrich the lives of others. So when you enrich your life and you find love and acceptance and strength and flexibility and courage, you can give that to others. I cannot give love unless I love myself. I cannot give acceptance unless I accept myself. I cannot give patience, forgiveness, the list goes on and on and on, unless I possess and own that myself. So his talk was really, really powerful to me and just amplifies a lot of the belief systems that I have because the core element of all of this, of course, is love. Once you begin to love yourself, then you can do so many things in this life, in this world, and you begin to love other people on a completely different level. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of times when we get in relationships, we have a certain threshold or a misconception that it's going to be a fairy tale life and everything is going to be so great and so amazing. And when it's not, we fall into that victimhood mentality where we blame the significant other. Well, it's their fault. 
or they're changed. All they do is come home and play video games and drink beer. And, and I always ask people, well, did they do that when you were dating? Well, yeah. Well, did they do that after you got married? Yeah. Well, why do you think they're going to really change at this point? That's who you married. That's the person you married. But for some reason, at some point, you have different expectations. So I think it's important, no matter where you live, is to study, you know, the statistics. How many people in your community stay married or get divorced? How many of the people in your community have an affair? And if you go into a relationship knowing that at some point you or the significant other is going to have an affair or maybe possibly get cancer or become obese or have diabetes or have other health concerns or issues or have that financial affair, whatever it may be, how do you handle the situation? And then how do you handle it going forward? Right? We have all messed up numerous times in our life and we're going to mess up again. But as warriors, we become accountable for our beliefs. We begin to apologize genuinely for what occurred and we promise that it's not going to happen again. And we focus on trust constantly. We do those things because we hold ourselves at a higher standard, a higher level of consciousness, of integrity, of honor, pride, of love. And we have to forgive ourselves first. Otherwise, we'll never move on and we'll have bitterness and anger and distrust within ourselves. We won't trust ourselves that we're not going to, you know, do that again and whatever it may be. So begin to take accountability of your life on all levels and realize that we're all a statistic at some level at some point. But what is it you really want? Who do you really want to be? How do you really want to flourish and make that impact? And allow those people in our life that may have let us down at some point or we had false expectations to really transform, to provide a level of acceptance of who they are today, of who you are today, of unconditional love, of hope and peace, and number one, forgiveness. The lower expectations that you have of people, the less you're going to be let down. So allow yourself just to be open to whatever they're going to give you that day. And honor and love them for who they are in that moment, in that breath. And realize a lot of times we're expecting more out of the significant other than we're even giving. So give yourself the opportunity to live life to the fullest. To reduce your expectations. To release those attachments to success and failures and find forgiveness on a completely, totally different level. And begin to understand that mentality of a warrior. That it really is about unconditional love and acceptance. It's about forging your own path and choosing your own destiny that you do not have to have a conventional life to be happy. And that we all have to follow orders and directives at some level in our life. But we need to do it with integrity and honor and pride. And we need to do it at a completely, totally different level. And give yourself the opportunity to expect more and understand that each and every single one of us is going to have the opportunity to be misled or misguided. That failure is truly feedback. And when we fail in our relationships personally and professionally, or when we fail with the relationship that we have with, our, uh, with ourselves, it gives us the opportunity to grow and stretch and learn. Our life is not going to be perfect. You, none of us are perfect. So when you go into a relationship personally and professionally, make sure that your expectations are something that are actually achievable, accomplishable, that your expectations are not something that people cannot even expect. Years and years ago, there was this lady that I met and she was going through a divorce and she wrote down what she wanted in a man and, and I said, well, just let me see the sheets. And it was like four pages front to back, you know, and, and I said, do you realize this person doesn't even exist? Not a man or a woman. This person, there's no person that has all of this in their life. And I think a lot of times we do not have true expectations of people in our society. Now, I'm not saying to always think that you're going to be let down because that's not the case at all. People truly, genuinely, I believe are good people. I believe a lot of times though with PTS 
and anxiety, we become stressed. And people with PTS, you know, they have a higher rate of, you know, affairs, and they have a higher rate of trauma and alcohol and things like that because of the stress. And and we are challenged, and we don't know how to deal with it. We don't know how to deal with all the emotions, and thoughts, and feelings that are occurring. And so, what do we do? We go to those addictions, right? We eat too much, or drink too much, or spend too much, or look for love in all the wrong places, or wherever it may be. So if you're struggling with PTS or if you need a life coach or if there's anything that I can do for any of you guys at any point, you can call, email me, text me, anytime. I love you guys. I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope they're insightful. But to me, last week was really just about releasing expectations, releasing attachments to success and failures, and allowing myself to be present and be in the moment and realize that each and every one of us really have the opportunity to live life to the fullest and that our past experiences made us who we are today and whatever that journey and that path may be. But please do not criticize and condemn other people for what they've done. Please do not criticize and condemn yourself for what you have done, but allow yourself to just be in this moment. I hope you have an amazing week. I'll leave you with is that when you think about your identity as a human being, you think about your identity as a man. We all have different identities, okay? We're all artists, we're all creators, we're sons, some of us are fathers, right? We are friends, we have all of these different identities in our life. And you think about like what the warrior identity is about. How is the warrior identity really expressed? What does that mean? Well, a warrior is really about two things. It's about courage, but more than just courage, it's about courage in service. That's really what a word is about, it's about courage in service. And if you really dig down and you think like, what's at the root of that? What's at the root of courage and service? It's love. And so why are we willing to sacrifice? for our country, why are we willing to sacrifice for our family, why are we willing to sacrifice for our communities, because we love them.